So on the subject of prayer, I, I've, I've talked about this thing many times before, but there might be some new people or you might just need to be reminded. Since I was telling the choir this morning, I don't sit down to prayer without my tools. So how many of you would cook a meal without first going to the grocery store and getting the ingredients? When you have prayer, after you've prayed a long time, it's easy to pray without anything. At the same time, I still like my tools to be around me because these are the things that move you quickly into the spirit world and the gear shift between the everyday things that you do to move into the spirit sometimes gets stuck. And sometimes that is the dread of prayer. When you're trying to establish a prayer life, that movement from um, rushing around doing what you need to do to beginning to really move into the spirit can be difficult. So let me give you some tools. One of the first things and the easiest things you can do, because just like we start services with music, is you can start your prayer time with music. Now this is for you to sing the songs that are worshipful directly to the Lord. So you're not just singing to hear the pretty tone that your voice is making or to do the fancy run. This is um, your voice singing to God's ear. So you can use any of the songs, the worshipful songs, many we sing here, many you know on your own. Turn those on and just sing those songs to Jesus. You will feel his presence come in really quick and really easy. And that's why in the Bible, he almost always starts with the singers, right? Because his pr that, that transfer from, from flesh to spirit can go quicker through singing worship songs to the Lord. This is a, this is a very important part of prayer that really you don't want to cut it out. Um, this is how David got into the presence of the Lord. He was always writing songs and singing these songs to the Lord, okay? So some of you may be in the early stages of prayer. Maybe you spend 30 minutes doing that because you're just so moved in the Holy Spirit or whatever. Um, to, it moves you, these songs you pick. I would pre-pick the playlist if I were you because the, the finding is going to move you back out of the Spirit. And it's hard to get back in. So you want to prep these things. It's like I'm prepping to have the groceries to make this special cake. You're prepping your time in prayer so it's not wasted time. Okay, so that's a way to worship. You may find yourself weeping in a song, crying, speaking in tongues. Play that one again if that's, if that's the one you're feeling that day. Um, but that's an easy way to move from the flesh into the spirit. Another tool is um, I would use the, I have so many tools. I love them all. So the power of a praying woman, I would use that if you're a man or a woman because there's nothing to do with, you know, who you are. But they're, what these prayers are, they're long prayers. They're not two sentences. So this takes up time in your prayer time. But each one of them are stacked with one scripture after the other. So when while you're reading these prayers with your spirit, you're actually confirming the word of God over everything that is said. So like one prayer is about, let me find my purpose. Okay? That's something that you may lose, you may lose your purpose even when you're 50 years old and have to reassert, what is my purpose now? My kids are gone. Uh, I got to find what, what is my purpose on this earth, Lord? And so that is a beautiful prayer. Um, Lord, help, um, Lord, guide all my emotions. This is a beautiful prayer. So you're praying against being led by your emotions. You're praying to have the emotions of Christ so that you're not responding to stuff, but the Lord has pre prepared your emotions for the day, and you're not going to get worked up over every little thing that is said or done. Another prayer is help me in my work. So these prayers bless me in my work. These prayers are prayers that she's gathered from the word of God, and you are 
declaring them over yourself. Let me be a forgiving person. This is a nice long prayer. I remember when I first started her prayers, I would just say to myself, they're not really hers because of the word of God, but you know what I'm saying. She's put them together nice for us. And in these prayers, um, I would pick four. I said, you have to pick four every day for just me. So then I would pick four for myself. Pretty, that's like 20 minutes right there. And now I'm filled with the things I've spoken over myself. And then she has another one that's um, prayers of parents for their children. So, you know, I used to pray four for Jordan, four for Savannah, whatever they were dealing with at that time. Well, that was an hour right there of prayer, right? Then you have, you have the, um, I would use all John Eckhart stuff. He's the power, one of his books is The Power That Brings Down Mountains, The Power of Blessing, The Power of Routing Out Demons and Curses. These are books I reach to time and time again because when it comes to cursing the devil, rather than cussing the devil, I will resort to these curses that are already in the word of God. And I have now, I'm not saying just my words, now I'm reiterating the words of the Bible against him. Now I just got from one of John Eckhart's books, I just got a sentence that I adore. And it took me like a day to get it right every time. But I love it so much that I say it many times a day. Because as I pray, this, sometimes I get, you get tired in your spirit. Like you just get tired. And you, I'm saying, listen. Holy Spirit, inner, you know, fill me up in my innermost being. Give me strength. Mighty weapons of war come. In just a minute, you've got strength again. But the prayer I love, it says, the, the original scripture says that my word, God's talking about himself. My word is like a hammer that breaks the rocks in pieces. Now, any of you that are trying to bring down a mountain, you need this scripture. Okay, because if you think of like K2 or Everest, these are mountains that are nothing but rocks. Huge, massive rocks falls the size of cars fall down in a given day. So if you vision yourself hammering something and it's crumbling because you need the vision as you pray. So you're not just saying words and your mind's going other places. That doesn't work. Your mind has to be engaged. Because faith demands the mind imaginations. It says it. Imaginations. Imaginations. So your mind is imagining what the spirit, what you're saying to this mountain. In fact, you're 150% in. You're wholehearted, invested in bringing this mountain down. Now, this is the verse I love. So that was the verse. So the way John Eckhart put it was brilliant. He said, Lord, let your word out of my mouth be like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces. Can you say that? Let your word out of my mouth be like a hammer that breaks the rocks in pieces. Now you're ready to pray. So now you know you're empowered. Now um, there's desperate Prayers for Desperate Times. I believe that is still another Eckhart. Fabulous things because in that, you have scriptures about your authority. I know I'm my authority. I stand in my authority. So he's, he's brought scriptures and then he writes down these things and it's beautiful. I'm telling you this because these things work. I've, I've spent my life dedicated to prayer. So I know what is what works. I'll they work so much more effectively than the little scripture and then you writing a bunch of stuff. It works to pray a lot of the word of God. It works to use these um, things. So I use that. I use routing demons. Now, I spend a good portion of my life not concerned with the devil, just talking to Jesus the whole time. But then I told you that when I started seeking him, he started pointing to me how the devil was destroying my life and many other people's lives. And then he made me. But it was in the word all the time. Religion, religious traditions didn't approve. Uh, it was giving glory to Satan. 
you know. No, it wasn't. No wonder the devil told us that. We were bringing date Satan down. And so he'll tell you, oh, that's vain, veins and repeatings. He, that's the first thing he told me when I was repeating the scripture over and over over my situation. He said, vain repeatings. Don't you know the Lord knows what you want even before you ask? Yeah, but he said, ask. <laughs> ask. Ask. Ask so many times that even an unjust judge would give it to you. Don't stop asking. Keep asking. If there's an important prayer, you'll have a long prayer that you have a lot. You, you're hitting every single thing. But you also need a summary of that prayer that's literally ingrained in your brain. You can pray it when you fall asleep at night. You can pray it when, in the middle of the night if you have to use the restroom. You can pray it right when you get up. These are the way we're breaking the rocks with the word of God, with the hammer of the word of God. And don't ever let the devil tell you that it's vain repeatings. Why wouldn't he think that? He doesn't want the word of God coming against him like a hammer. He's going to tell you, don't say that. Your God already knows. Be quiet. Get thee behind me, Satan. I'm fixing to say it a hundred more times. So it's you against the, the powers of hell. Now, we don't know why God cho chose this because he himself can bring Satan down on any given day without a puff of air. Okay? But he demanded that we be able to make the devil step back by his power. I will tell you this. The devil doubtfully obeys you when you have no power. He just looks at you and laughs. But when you have power, you can feel the fear of his presence. When he comes to scare you, you can, you can growl like a lion. You're so mad. Your spirit rises up and you know who's going to lose this battle. So I'm telling you, have these John Eckhart books, fabulous. The reason why they're fabulous is he may give you some, a few pages of chapter um, throughout the book, but most of the book is scriptural prayers. Um, there is, I love the warfare prayer of Dr. Cindy Trims, I think it is. That thing is nothing but pure fire. <laughs> There's many times I just go and hit like, you know, 30 minutes of what's in there. The other warfare prayers I use are John Ramirez. He has some very good, like, devil, I come to you in the name of Jesus, and I send the arrows dipped in the blood of Jesus into your camp. I mean, it's nothing but fun for, for a person of power to pray. So these are the things. And then not only that, you have the word of God, which I open multiple times in prayer. I'll just open it and just see, is there anything the scripture saying to me right here? Then I'll start praying again. They'll open again because the word of God is how God speaks back to you. Many times that will be the way he speaks back to you. You'll be asking a question, 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 that neither the scripture will come to you as rhema or you'll read it and it'll become rhema, and that can be your answer. But listen, God did not raise Christians to be so pitiful that we think we can just go pray through about a situation. That's not what he said. He said, ask persistently. Um, if you think about it, when, when they got Peter out of prison, the saints were praying night and day, night and day. They did not stop until this thing that was important was done. So if you and your husband are together on this thing, maybe your finances, you're sick of the spirit of poverty, taking everything that you've got, and you grab one of those John Eckhart books, and he's got some good scriptures against the spirit of poverty. You're breaking it down, and the spirit of blessing is coming into your life, which is another book he has. So you just, like, you're just using this as a tool. Gather together with whoever you can, because you need more than one. One says it's that um, what, one sets a thousand to flight into 10,000. So the multiplication of people praying on the same subject in agreement is gathering force, right? So I'm going to leave you with this little story. It's actually a big story. I love this story so much. It's a very powerful man of God who's taught persistence in prayer his whole life. Um, he said that there was a woman in his church 
that um, she had got tumor in her head. She could no longer see. She could no longer hear. And the next morning, they were going to do surgery on this tumor, but nobody really had hope um, that was going to happen. So that day, she made um, an agreement with the Lord, and she said, Lord, I'm going to pray the Lord's Prayer 1,000 times before my surgery tomorrow. So she began. It took her hour after hour after hour. It took her about eight hours, I think they said, if I'm not mistaken, for her to reach the thousandth time of praying the Lord's Prayer. After completing the thousandth time of the Lord's Prayer, she sat up in bed. She could see. She could hear. She rang, she screamed. She rang for the nurses. They came in there and saw that she could see, and now she could hear. They rushed her into the x-ray, and they showed her two. One brain with the tumor, and one brain completely healed by the power of God. Yeah. 